Hi there, I'm Danny Henderson, and today I have an extraordinary guest. Her name is Maureen Sullivan, and she is the author of the historical book called Girl in the Tunnel. Welcome, Maureen O'Sullivan. Thank you. Can you see me okay? I can, yes. Excellent. Okay, we had a little bit of a te technical ding dong, <laughs> but we're good now. We're good now. So, Maureen, you were born in 1952 in Carlo, in the south of Ireland. And, That's correct, yes. And who was in your household at that time? Well, in the household at that time, I think my father and my mother was living with my grandmother, which would have been my father's mother. And uh, then, then there was two of my brothers born. And then my father died and my mother was still pregnant on me. My father died in February, and I was uh, born in August of 52. Wow. And what happened after your birth? So you came into the world without a father. So with, with Yes, brothers. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he died. T, TB was rampant in Ireland in them years. And my father got TB and he died. He was only 31, 30, I think he was 31, he was. He wow. was a very young man. And then once I was born, uh, a priest, I think, from what I've been told, my mother was told to, to remarry, that she would be better off getting herself a husband, that she shouldn't be a young widow, and that uh, she should remarry. But anyway, she remarried, and there was three, she had three children, two boys and myself. And I suppose... Um, she moved into the town. We lived out two miles out the country and my mother moved into the town and things wasn't the way that my mother thought were going to be. The happiness wasn't there. Uh, of course, he, everything was fine till she got married and once she was married, then she was trapped mm -hmm. and there was no way out. There was no refuge for women. There was nowhere she could go to speak or nobody to talk to. And her mother had a quite a hard life, which she would have been a very hard woman, mm -hmm. uh, very difficult to talk to. You made your bed, you lie on it, sort of thing. Uh, that was the way Ireland was in them days. And um, uh, my stepfather, he didn't, ha he had no time for us, uh, didn't like us at all. And uh, I suppose eventually uh, started abusing us and... Uh, beaten us and then as I got a bit older say to I was still only an innocent child say about eight or nine years of age the sexual abuse started. Maureen can I ask you a question before we get into that what is the name of this paedophile? Uh, Christy Whelan. Christy Whelan. Yeah. And this man married your young mother who had young children, a widow, because a priest yes. a priest advised her to. Now, did that yeah. priest did that priest magic this paedophile up to become a father and have children in the world? Well, I don't know. That's we, we'll never know. We'll right. never know that because all these things was well covered up. Of course. So, yes, they, yeah, they all look after we'll each other. Find, yeah. Yes. We're yeah. shining a light on the church, the evils of the church across the planet, and no one's getting away with one thing. Newsflash. Yeah. Um, so when this paedophile, um, who was given the title of father and stepfather, started not only bashing you, thumping you, you little yes. girls and little yeah. boys, uh, like a real man, a real good yeah. Irish man beating on yes. little tiny babies. Yes. Um, and he started to sexually abuse you. Can you give us a little yes. bit of detail on what that looked like, please? Well, it was quite horrible, quite uh, distorting for a child, as you can. I mean, you can't even imagine it, can you really? No. Um, you didn't know what was happening to you. Your body, there was parts of your body that was sore. Uh, you, you kind of, uh, in Ireland in them days, you weren't to speak to anybody else. You weren't to talk about it. It was never to be spoken about. Um, very, very difficult, very hard times. And there was a nun quite good to me, actually. She was very kind to me. And uh, I kind of opened up to her. Uh, I don't blame her in a way. 
uh, I think she believed that I was going to have going to be sent away and have an education because she covered my books for me. And I can't see her going to that trouble to send me to a Magdalene laundry. But when I arrived, she, well, she told me, I know I'm jumping the story a little bit, but when I opened up to her and told her what was happening to me, I couldn't live in the house anymore and that I was so unhappy. Um, she called a priest and the priest said that I should be sent away and that I would go and be educated to a, a school in Uros, which was St. Aidan's. But when I arrived at St. Aidan's, it was completely a different story. I wasn't brought in and signed in to St. Aidan's at all. I was signed in to a Magdalene laundry. And I couldn't, for years, I couldn't figure out why they did that to me. And eventually I found out because of the way I suffered, my education was taken from me. Um, I was made work in the laundry every day. I was made scrub floors in the mornings before we went to work in the laundry. Um, we, we did get food, yes. We had a clean bed, yes. Uh, they were very cruel, very unkind to us. We weren't allowed to communicate with each other. We couldn't speak to one another. Uh, the women there were very, very disturbed, very hurt, very downtrodden, uh, very cruel, very cruel, cruel place. And I was trafficked from one place to another. Uh, they changed my name. Uh, I wasn't allowed to be called Maureen anymore. Uh, my name was changed to Francis. That's such a um, name. Maureen, yeah. can I, can yeah, I come to you? Darling, there's so much here. There's so much. May I go down a little bit? Maureen, there are so many children that are now adults, such as yourself, who have yes. suffered the most horrendous, horrific sexual, physical, mental, emotional abuse over these years. And we were yes. raised, you know, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and still to this day, children are treated like nothing. Little boys and little girls, and they still get away with it. And the church, yes. the people that put themselves in the hierarchy, they're still abusing. It's yes. still happening. Yeah. yeah. And I know this is not easy to talk about. And I thank you for how brave you are. You are so brave. Oh, I just, thank oh, you. I do thank honor you. you. Because, you know, I know we're going to come to it, but there were so many children, dead bodies found during your time. But I want to, and we want to honor every single little beautiful soul that was taken. Oh, yes. Yeah. You. And yeah. so I want to go down the road a little bit back um, and to ask you um, something really awful. But, you know, we hear so much about children and them being touched in the worst way and harmed. When this stepfather, Christy, came to you as a little tiny girl and took your virginity in the way that a man would do an, an adult woman, not a baby girl. Did you even conceive of the idea that that was a thing that adults did to each other? I didn't, no, I didn't understand it at all. I, it, made, it made no sense to me. I just knew it was horrible. I knew it was wrong. I knew there was something, e actually I picked up evil, that there's evil in this and which there is. It is an evil thing to do to any child. Uh, what adults do is, is their own business. They're grown up, they're adults. But to a child, to me, is that I've no other word for it on its evil. It is. I, I, thank you for answering that difficult question because, you know, we all get horrified and we all think we can imagine, but, but we need a brighter light on this. We need yes. to protect yes. all of the children everywhere in every country, yes. and especially... Yes under the name of the church, especially yeah. under the name of the crumbling, falling down religions, which thank goodness that's happening. And it's women like you yes. that are telling their story after how many years? This is 60, yeah. years ago. Yeah, I'm 70 now. I'll be 71 in August. And I was uh, 12 when I first spoke about it. And I was only 12 years of age when I was sent to that Magdalene laundry. Right. I only slept in St. Aelan's for a few few weeks and then I was transferred to the laundry. Right. Uh, I was never registered in St. Aidan's in the industrial school 
because I, I found out, I found out why. I didn't know these things for years. I was thinking, well, why did they do that to me? Why did they treat me like that? How did I do so wrong by telling the truth that I was, I couldn't live in the house anymore, that the pain was getting too much for me? Because they noticed a difference in me in school that none noticed she picked up on it. And I think she tried to help me. And it, it turned out the other the other way with the, the nuns in Eurasta were looking at things differently. The presentation nuns where I was going to school here in Carlo were educators, where the Good Shepherd nuns was uh, money-making nuns, were laundry, rosary beads, iron sweaters, mattresses, um, laundry was the big thing. So they were money makers. I, that's what I call them. And I think their attitude was cruel, um, unkind. There was no kindness in them. And I, I had to find out. And that's why I'm having the book launch, not in Carlo. I'm having it in Kilkenny because that's where the veil, I call it the veil was lifted. Because after all them years, I was working, I was very lucky when I came back to Ireland, I started to work for a man from Northern Ireland and he was very uh, upfront, a very straight man and he believed in justice. And uh, he, he brought me down, he wrote a letter to the nun and asked her could he meet up with us, that I was very disturbed by why did he do this to me? Why did the traffic me, change my name and take my education off me? It was beginning to hurt me, really hurt me. Why did Because all the stuff was coming out in Ireland about the church. And I thought, well, why did they do this to me? So we went to meet her. And she said, the shock was, and I'll never forget it. And I don't think my boss will ever forget it either. Uh, she just said at... Um, would you like your, she said, have you got children? And he said, yeah. And he, she said, would you like your daughters playing with an abused child? And he said, I don't understand. What do you mean? And she said, we couldn't have Maureen playing with the other children. And I, I looking at her and I said, why? And she said, you could tell them what happened to you. And I said, oh. My gosh. Oh my God. So I said, the perpetrator got away free. Mm -hmm. I was punished for everything. I was stripped of everything. I was stripped of the love of my grandmother. I was taken away from my two brothers. I was taken away from my mother. And I already had no father. And I mean, how, how, how can you punish an innocent child that was abused for something that an adult done. And the way the priest looked at it, we only found out after, the way the priest looked at it was, I wasn't part of the family unit anymore. My father was dead. So I wasn't a part of the family unit. And the best thing to do, he was a good man. He took my mother on with three children. So we'll get this girl put out of the way put this child below, she can work in the laundry. And that's exactly what they did to me. It's just so horrific. And you, as a little girl, were among many hundreds of thousands of little girls. And it's interesting because we talk and we focus on different colored skins where we're all one family. But the yes. stories of yeah. the white, the white um, brutality, the white slave trade, uh, largely, uh, across Ireland, um, because there's many stories of many different children going different places in Ireland, for example. So that was a white slave trade within Ireland itself, under the guise yes. of the church that was deemed to be the almighty or loving, which was the opposite. And still the today, opposite, yes. across the world, yeah. it's the opposite. Yeah. So they stripped you of everything. You everything. were held, right, because of a filthy, dirty paedophile who did the most horrific things that you didn't even conceive of the idea of. I mean, guys, think about that. A little tiny baby girl doesn't even know what a penis is, okay? 
we have to start shining a light there so people can wake up more and be more yeah. outraged or maybe heal their own pain talk about their own pain name the perpetrators name the establishment yes. how else do we change and break down the systems they can't kill us all Correct. they can't silence yes. us all that's why you are so brave and honoring of yes, so thank you um, thank you maureen honestly this is such a an impassioned subject for me and for millions of people so Going back, um, the name of the um, priest or the bishop or whatever the hierarchy was in the Magdalene laundry. So the Magdalene laundries were workhouses for little children and damaged women who'd been thrown away like you, who'd probably been raped and maimed and abused. Some of them got pregnant. You know, oh, it's all your right. always the girl's fault, isn't it? That's right. Yes. You're put into these horrific situations, working fifteen hours a day, horror upon horror upon horror. Um, who was the head of the church in that time? Feel free to speak their names out into the field. Who were the nuns that abused you? Feel free to speak their names out into the uh, yeah. field. Yeah, yeah, they were the good shepherd nuns. That's who they were, the Good Shepherd nuns. They run all the laundries in Ireland. Okay, you're yeah. welcome to say, you know, sister who and sister this and father Well, this. the thing is, yeah, well, strangely enough, I wish I could. Uh, down down in, uh, in your house, the Good Shepherd nuns, you never called them by name. It was mother. There was only one nun that I knew her name, and I'll never forget it because it always stuck out in my head. Uh, it was Mother John, because uh, I thought John was a, a man's name, and I and that's how it stuck in my head. I thought it was just strange that she was Mother John, but that's what we called them down there. Was Mother? I never said to them Mother Trees or Mother anything. I just said, "Excuse me, Mother." Wow. Uh, yeah. Can so I go to the, the toilet? Can I use the toilet? Right. Excuse me, mother, can I get a drink? I never call them by name. It's very clever, isn't it? It's a very clever very way clever. To, yes. to, to remove identity of the children. They changed your name. They took your name away, which is another theme yes. across the world. We annihilate, assassinate the soul, ruin the child that's been affected. And, and the yeah. adults just carry on as they always have, you know, and yeah. they still are to this very day, to this very day. Um, can yeah. you tell us, so you thought you were going away when the nun realized you were being abused by the pedo in your house. She thought she was helping you by taking you and sending you away to school in New Ross. I, I really do believe that she did because she was always kind to me and she always would give me little bits of clothes like, you know, she'd get me to go down to the convent in the evenings and I always found her very kind. And, I, and she uh, covered my books the night before and she gave me lovely, and she gave me lovely pencils. And my mother went and bought me a lovely pencil case. And it was, in my mind, it was a posh pencil case because we didn't have much. We were a very poor upbringing. My mother didn't have much money. And it must have been, I'd say, children's allowance day because my mother went and bought me a pencil case before I left. She says, don't let her go till I come back. And my mother gave me the pencil case. And when I went to New Ross, I knew by the two nuns that was waiting for me, I knew that something wasn't right. I knew by the way they greeted me. I knew by the way they looked me up and down. It was like if they were stripping me of bits of me or destroying my soul, like they were, they were doing something terrible to me. And they, they, I handed over my books and my pencil case, and that was the last I ever seen of my, and I kept asking about my pencil case, especially the pencil case, because my mother had bought it, and they would not answer me, they would not tell me why they weren't giving me the pencil case, I kept asking them, where was my classroom, why aren't I going to school, And but you wouldn't get an answer. It's just evil, but evil. It was just pure, I was, it was pure evil, it was very, very wrong, it was, and it's a very corrupt system to be able to treat human beings and little children like that and nobody come in and ask questions. And the poem that we call the book, The Girl in the Tunnel, was when inspectors, well, we think there were inspectors, we're not quite sure, 
Uh, but all as I know is one of the nuns would grab a hold of me and they said, come on, come on, quickly. You're, we're putting you into the tunnel and stay there and don't come out on to, because the men with the suits is coming. We'll come back down for you. That's all I ever knew. The man with the suit or the men with the suits is coming. And they'd lock me into the tunnel and when the men would be gone, whoever was in, whoever they were, that didn't want them to see me, were gone, they'd come down and get me. And there was one day they forgot about me. They left me in there nearly all day. It was very late at night when they came down to get me. God. And I'll never forget that. That was a nightmare. I'll never forget it. It took me years to get over it. And even to this day, I won't pull curtains in my room. Oh, my darling. Listen, yeah. all we can see right now is your beautiful face glowing in the dark. <laughs> Do you want to stick a light on? Because it's so dark. Oh, I will. Yeah, yes. hold on. I'll just pause this for a second let you do that. Yeah. So Maureen, getting back to the fact that your book is called Girl in the Tunnel, can you go into more detail? What was the tunnel? Where was it? What did it look like? Did it have lights in it? Where did it go? And why would they put you in there? Yeah, well, the tunnel, strangely enough, when I was in St. Aidan's, the first... I'd say for about a month, maybe two months. I'm not sure how long, because there was no calendars. There was no clock. Time was just, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't even know what day of the week it was. Wow. So I don't know. I can't say uh, how long I was in St. Aidan's. But when I go over in the morning, I'd be taken out of bed before the other children could see me or speak to me. They weren't allowed to speak to me. And we were taken down a long corridor and under the church was the tunnel. And then you'd walk along and you'd come out to the Magdalene Laundry. It's barred up. I've been back down there and it's barred up and people knew about it. And the first documentary that was ever made, The Forgotten Maggies, I went down one day after coming back from England and I went down and met this lovely lady and I said, I'm looking for, I said, where the, the door, the, where the door of the tunnel was. I used to be in the tunnel and I'd come out onto this corridor here. And she said, I remember them all talking about you. And there was a caretaker there. And he said, yeah, he said, that's all plastered up now. You would never think there was a door there. The tunnel is all covered up and hidden. He said, you must be the girl that's talking about it. The very minute you'd speak about something about the church or mention something about these places, when you go back to visit, it would be changed. Right. There'd be walls, windows would be blocked up, doors would be taken out. Now, I don't know if that was done before that. Before I went down, I think it was because it's a school now. They teach children there now. And I'd say they didn't want that door there and they didn't want anybody going down into the tunnel. It, the tunnel was dark, horrible, and there was a light. I'll always remember a light and it used to blink. One minute it'd be on, the next minute it'd be off, on, off, on, off. And there was like a little storeroom off of one piece of it. I remember a shelf and there was uh, tins of stuff on it, like beans and things like that. And there was tins of biscuits. And I don't know if they had it as a storeroom or what, I'm not sure. Um, but cold, scary, very frightening place. Um, not a place where a little child should be left and locked in to, to cover up their evil ways because that's what they were doing. They were hiding me there. Yeah. So that the people, I don't know who these people were coming in. I don't know if they came in to inspect the place, which wouldn't be all that much. They wouldn't have came that often. I'd say anybody that even came in to visit, I was taken out of the laundry because I shouldn't have been there. And I'd say that the people from the hotels would have visited the laundry from time to time 
I would I wouldn't be left left there then. I would have been hidden. Anyone that came in there, they would have hid me. Is it because you were so young? Were there other yes. children in the laundry, or just you? No, you were the no, only. No, I was child. the only. Yeah. So that's yeah. why. I now I don't know before that, I or after me, I don't know. But at that time, I was the only child that was there. And when you were a little girl, were you a little petite little girl? Did you look twelve? Yes, or... I was. Yes, yeah, I was quite small. So I'd be a little bit like the photograph on the front of the cover. That's my real picture. Can you show of when us? I was a child? Show yeah. us the cover. Yeah. Just keep it there for a minute. Oh, you beautiful little girl, you are. Beautiful. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah. Thank you, love. Um, so back to the tunnel. Um, as there are many tunnels across America, across every continent, across the UK, across Ireland, in churches, often there is an escape route, a tunnel for storage or whatever. There's always been as time has begun, castles and taverns and pubs with tunnels leading here and there and you know, the uh, the days of the smugglers and all the stories that we hear. Yeah. So we know this is a reality. It's not something that that is um, fantasy born out of a one lady's story. And to highlight that too, I know one of the reasons why you've written your story after all of these years of uh, being in recovery, because that's what it is. It's being in yeah. recovery. Yeah. Um, yeah. You also wish to honour at least um, 800 little babes whose bodies were found Oh, Tomb, it's just, there's times I cry, there's times I am so sad about that. And of course, the wonderful Kathleen Corliss, uh, what a brave woman, what a great woman to unfold all this. And do you know what the sickening part about it is? That them children are still in that pit. That, that's the sickening part of it. What's wrong with our government? That the, And what's wrong with the Irish people that they ain't out marching and demanding for them children to be excavated? I, as far as I know, it is going to happen. When? I don't know when it's going to happen. You know, what, what's holding it up? What's wrong with people? Have we gone that... I, I don't know, we're supposed to be progress and, and uh, things that happened in the past will never happen again. But yet, these children are still in this. And I, I say it exactly like it is because it annoys me. I get awful upset about you. They're in a shit pit. Yeah. That's yeah. what these little children are in is a shit pit. How can our government and how can, how come even the Catholic Church that if they were sorry about all this and they were ashamed about all this, why haven't they kicked up about it and said, well, right, let's get these little souls out of here and let's give them a decent burial. Let's I'll, respect I'll tell these you children. Why. Shall I tell you why, darling? Please do. Because, I need an answer to that one. Because the world is run by spineless mofos, soulless, heartless cretins, and a lot of which they're not even human. They have yes. these, the, 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 the intelligence of a dinner plate and they all come together in their systems. Now, when this shit pit, which is a sewage hole, where these yes. babies' bodies are still down, still down there after all these years, yeah. When they do clear that pit, and trust me, they are going to clear that pit. And every yes. one of those little babes is going to have a place and, and flowers and love given to them. Each one of them, when that happens, as it is happening, and, and we, we, we claim it so, it's yes. going to shine another big light in the arse and the face of all of the churches, the Catholic churches, the priesthood, the nunneries, all of these psychotic yes. serial killers, serial killers. Ooh, don't say that. Why not? It's the truth. Just because you have it's a woman truth, in yeah. a habit and yeah. a man in a robe, we've got to stop this nonsense. Who cares? Yes. King, queen, pope, president, I don't care. Show me who you are by your actions. 
And that's what yes. Means. I cannot believe it's 2023 and that we are dealing with the, the, the idiots that run the systems because, oh, no, don't say anything. Kill that person. Silence that person. Their day is done. And humanity rises in love, my darling. And we now shine a light in every single hole and every single face of evil and soullessness and heartlessness. And women like you, this book is a history book. This is a historical. Oh, it is. Yeah. historical document let me just put you on a nobody wants to see my face banging on um it's a historical document that yeah. i personally and though millions will thank you so much for shining a light for writing your story as one little child who was abused in the home by a non-human taken away told she was going to school and then made to work like a dog and a slave in in a in a place in a a workhouse basically that was abused further abused by women who were supposed to be loving nuns yes yeah and and, and the, they even took i mean the most painful thing i think about it all was the years that you took me away from my the love of my grandmother i mean she'd lost her son and we we were her world we were her life and she was stripped of that as well. And I was stripped of her love. I was taken away from everything. I was punished in every way. You could, in every way you think of. I mean, my name changed. My education taken from me. I was worked so hard. Um, then shifted from there to another place in the thigh. And then... Again, and that's why I call it trafficked. I was trafficked. They denied it at first. I couldn't even get my papers. They denied it. And the only reason how they had to admit that I was there and that I was telling the truth was uh, my confirmation. If I hadn't made my confirmation, they would have destroyed my papers and denied that I was ever there. Then they even tried to cover up my age when I went in there. The even even the paper that they covered up on, they told a lie. But we had a judge after that looked into it all. So then we got our papers to say that uh, we were telling the truth. Um, actually, I must get that uh, sorted out one day and get it looked at and get everything up to date. Um, they just got away. They got away with everything. Nobody said to them stop nobody has even i don't think to this day has said to them i asked that nun that gave me the apology and click and she did say sorry she said it should never have happened she said what happened to you she was very wrong now from what i'm hearing it has happened to other young girls so i asked her would she come public and give me a, an apology in public and she said no she couldn't do that that's right, because then people would know how corrupt the church is. Yeah. It's a corporation, it's not built on love. And the people, yeah. the longer they get stuck in the programming and the fear of the Catholic religion without really honestly owning the fact that there is a loving essence to everything, but the rules yeah. and the regulations and the way that little girls and little boys who've been raped, abused, and molested and murdered, hence that's the shit pit, as you call it, where all these children were. Yeah. What was that? How many of the men who had access to children, got children pregnant, and those babies were aborted. Yes. That's happening yeah. across the world. So can you give us the name of the tomb, please, where the children are, are, are buried, and the name of Kathleen again? Yeah, it's in Tomb. That's in Mayo. It's a place. Uh, uh, come, yeah. Uh, Mayo, M-A-Y-O is Mayo. That's County Mayo. And the place, uh, the town is Tume, T-U-M-E, I think, or T-U-A-M, Tume. Yeah, T-U-A-M, Tume. I went down there to visit. And uh, the hair just stands on the back of your neck when you just go into that horrible place. And you think of those little souls. And they're just down in that rotten pit in a sewer that's what they're down in and 
that they haven't been taken out. And the na the lady that done it, Kathleen Corliss, she's just a beautiful woman, lovely woman. And she got a little bit suspicious. Well, first of all, it was two boys playing, two young boys, and they found the skeleton. And uh, I think it was a part, I think, I, I'm not sure now what the bone was that they found, but it was of a child. And Kathleen got suspicious. And I know she started asking for it. She never said nothing to nobody. And she started asking, going down and getting people's children's birth certs little children that died in the, in the mother and baby home. And she got their birth certs one by one and paid for them and everything herself and went home and worked in her kitchen and looked up and done research and found out about these little children that they were put into this shit pit and just dumped in there and left there. No respect for these little children. These are Catholic nuns now that are supposed to be um, brides of Christ. They're supposed to have love and compassion. And yet they would get this little child and throw it into a shit pit and not give it a decent burial. Catholic religion is based on, it's supposed to be a loving, caring religion. And death is so um, holy to them, so sacred to them. So how 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 can this have happened to such great, how could such great people allow such evil to happen? I, I just get so upset. I, it really upsets me when I think of Chum. It, it's one of the things above all the letter frack, uh, all the industrial schools that I went to visit and you see graves out the back and everything. It's very upsetting of young boys, young girls, uh, like the women in High Park. Now, the exact amount, I think it was uh, the when they were selling High Park was another Magdalene laundry. And they told the builders that they would have to exhume the bodies, that there was a hundred and something bodies of Magdalene women. But when the builder, the grave digger started digging, he said, there is a lot more than that. I think it turned out 150 something. Now they were taken out of High Park at 12, after 12 o'clock at night, taken to Glasnevin, which is in Dublin, and were cremated. No questions asked. One body had no skull. Another, other women had plaster paris on their legs, on their arms. There was bones broken. But no, nobody asked, nobody asked a question and said, what happened to these people? Where were they taken from? How come that woman has no skull? What's their names? Who are they? Nobody cared. And they're just in a mass grave up in Glass Nevin, and it hasn't been marked yet. Wow. wow. And that's the and none of the Magdalene way. graves, none of, sorry for cutting across you, but none of the Magdalene graves uh, was marked here until a lovely lady, Frances Finnegan. She had a, she brought out a book, uh, Perish Little Children, or something like that was the name of the book. She insisted on that um, all the graves should be marked and uh, that all the women's name, the Magdalene women's names should be put up on the ground. She gave them a certain length of time to do it and she got that done. You see, it takes a few brave people to come forward to change things. Yeah. And I think like Frances Finnegan, Christine Buckley, that opened up the Ashleen, uh, this, this education centre for survivors. She was a survivor herself. She was in Golden Bridge. Lovely woman, suffered her end. She's passed now. Uh, we all miss her terrible. She was one of the first to ever come out and speak about all this horrible stuff. And Kathleen Corliss. I think them three women 
I think in my, they're, they're so powerful. They're such brave people that we have to be thankful to them today for all the stuff that they have brought forward. And we are going to add Maureen Sullivan to that list. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You need to, yes. you need to know, lady. You need to know. And I will be ostracised in Ireland. I will be ostracised by some people for speaking this. I won't be liked by a lot of people. And that that's the sad side of it. I'll be called a liar. I'll be called because my stepfather went on to have 10 more children. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I know and they know that he abused a lot of others. But that's not my story. That's for them to, to speak about. I'm not going to interfere in that because my own journey is difficult enough. Mm -hmm. um, I feel, yes, I will be ostracized. They have children now. Their children are married into people here in Carlow. I am very, I, I was attacked one day. I went to the vets with my little dog and I was attacked. And I didn't know, I didn't even know the person that attacked me. I didn't know who they were. I had to get a friend of mine to come up. I was so upset. And I said, do you know who that man and woman is? And she said, yeah, they're married into your other side of the family. I says, oh, OK. And I'm going to have to put up with that. Is I, I will not get the honour that you're giving me tonight. And thank you so much for that, because that gives me strength. But I won't get that off of everybody in Ireland. I understand that. And it's a sad fact, you know, because it, it, is. it is it is so painful. It is so it is. for people to hear, like, let's just say the pedophile that attacked you has gone on to have other kids and then they've had kids and they're grown up. And then all they're going to hear is the great stories. Well, we know that that happens in every family. But it's OK if people now yeah. can accept the fact that maybe they don't know everything about this great grandfather. They've heard these great things. Maybe yes. he was a dirty, filthy pedophile, which is the case. Yeah. Which yes. is a singular reason you were taken away from the family. Now, yes, exactly. Couple, right, darling, and a couple of things on how children are treated under the Catholic care or religious care. We won't even get into the indigenous people on our planet. Let's just stick with the Catholic. Um, is it not true that if a baby is born out of wedlock, you know, let's just say that the daughter yeah. has been raped by the father, which has often been the case, got pregnant, yes. had the baby, She's died because she was maybe nine or ten. It's happened a million times. It still happens to this day. And um, and uh, the baby's there and they're like, well, it wasn't christened or baptized. So it doesn't get to be buried in the graveyard with all the other blessed people. It gets put outside on waste ground. How many times have you heard that story? That is how it's been. It does a place here in Carlo. Myself and another lady, got a, we got them to put up a plaque, which is a miracle. We can't believe that we got them to do it. And there's lovely houses all built in front of it. And there's this green and it's all children buried there that was born outside of wedlock. And uh, they weren't baptized, they weren't brought into the church. The, so the, therefore they weren't equal. So we got a plaque up for them. Uh, we did get the bishop here in Carlo uh, came and he said some prayers. And I had my Druid friend, uh, She's a teacher and she was teaching me Druidry and she came and she done the ceremony. And there's other in the graveyard here in Carlo, which is quite a big graveyard, St. Mary's. There is loads of people from institutions like Magdalene Laundry, mother and baby homes. Uh, little children are buried that was outside of wedlock and no, no marking. They're just nobodies. There's no marking put yeah. up for them. Yeah. So we're trying to get that done at the moment. I'm hoping that will be done. So uh, look, at, I, I don't know how, I, I don't, I just don't know. If I seen Tum being done and the dim little souls being taken out and given a decent burial, I think I will have some hope. But until that happens, the hope for Ireland, I I can't feel it. I just I just cannot feel it. 
I understand. You know, you've had years of this programming. You've been first yeah. victim of all the abuse from sp- supposed to have a loving family to then being taken yeah. to a school to be educated and looked after to then being condemned as a ruined yeah. abused child that might tell other children what happened. Yes. You slept in a dorm room with other little girls that were going to school. They would wake you yeah. early. They would take you down the tunnel and make you yeah. work in the Magdalene yeah. Laundry. Now, yes. why was it called the Magdalene Laundry, please? Well, because the Magdalene women were sinners. That's what, the, and there's a prayer down there. Actually, I must look it up again. It's a good few years since I took a snapshot of it. And there's a prayer down there for the penitents. That's what we were called. For a prayer for the penitents. That's what Magdalene women were calling. We were sinners. So see, the way they looked at me, and even the nun admitted it, I was a soiled child because I was abused. I was a soiled child. I mean, how cruel. It's, it's How cruel. there's no words for it, Maureen. There's no, no there's words not. for the thinking. Yeah. And and also, I got a message for the Pope. Oi, oi, mate, oi, boy, you listening? Cardinals, bishops, all of you, all of you, all of you nuns, all of you muppets that dared to crucify and kill and murder and rape and harm and traffic and enslave. How dare you? Yes. How dare yeah. you all? Guess what? Yeah. The light shines upon you. There is nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide. Every single beautiful soul, every blessed soul is blessing. Guess what? Here's a newsflash. Mary Magdalene was the most powerful disciple that Jesus Christ had. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it, all of you. You took her book. You took her words. You made her a yeah. son of a whore. Shame on you. Shame on you all. Oh, don't say that, Maureen. Oh, no. You know, yes, oh, no. Shunned. we'll be shunned. Yeah. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, dear. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. show me. Yeah. This has to stop. People like you speaking out, sharing your story, Maureen, being so brave. There is nothing on this planet that we cannot do. These people say they love. They say they worship. They say this and that. They are lying. We know who people are by their actions. We yes. see who someone is by their loving heart. And when yes. women have been murdered and slain and yeah. so many terrible things, you know, so many terrible things that are all coming to the light now. And every blessed soul that has suffered like you have is going to be loved and honored and respected and held in the highest of the high because there's no one higher. There's nothing higher than a beautiful, loving human. And any label, any curse, any, oh, I'm a nun, let me tell you what your life's going to be. Oh, no, I'm the Pope, yeah. I'm this, I'm a vicar, I'm a this. Enough already. No, we don't allow it. We don't accept it. We don't accept it. So to the Catholic Church, to the Vatican, you better sort your shit out, all of you. And there'll be so many people like, oh, oh, oh blasphemer. Really? Really? Yeah. You're going to put the men in dresses that hide behind the walls over the babies and the children, the little boys, the little girls, the women like Maureen, who's still in recovery from the trauma of having her life removed. The yeah. hundreds of thousands of Children with no graves, no markings. Yes, you know, horrible. Put that ahead of, oh, don't offend the Pope. I don't care. I don't care. A million scholars feel the same way. So, yeah. um, sorry. Um, I would, uh, again, the Magdalene Laundry, they named it Magdalene because Magdalene was portrayed, the beautiful Mary Magdalene was portrayed as something evil. Yeah. Which is a yeah. lie, a lie, a lie, a lie. A lie that was yeah. made to make women feel less than. Um, what is your feeling about Mary Magdalene? And what would you like to say uh, to 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 her name, to her honour? Well, I think that she was a beautiful woman. I um, often call on her. Um, I often bring in her energy and ask her to help me. And I did, as Elena can tell you, I did way back with Olivia Robinson in uh, Clonigal. We used to it kind of invoke her. That's what we would call it. We would invoke her and we would ask her for her help that the Magdalene 
stories would come out into the open and people would bring it forward. And it all happened. It all happened. I think she was a, a woman that helped people. I think that she used to sit down with a load of men and good men and uh, send them out into the world to preach good to people and, and help people. So that, uh, that that's my take on Mary Magdalene, and I I love her. I connect with her a lot. I always light a candle, and I always thank her for coming into my life. Uh, uh, when I invoke her, she comes into my world to help me, and she helped me uh in a lot of things. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. Thank you for speaking your heart there. Um, as we. Uh, shine a light on the true history of our planet in our, our planet and our solar system as we the people yeah. of this planet us beloveds us beautiful magnificent humans that come from love that love humanity that want to see us rise together in love that take down governments religions that repress and harm and negate humanity that's not love that's darkness that yes. is satan that is yes. the true yeah. face of satan in your face, yeah. that is the true yeah. face of Satan. Um, and uh, and again, what you're doing is so brave and so beautiful. And I'm glad you have loving family around you. Um, and I know this is going to be really difficult for a lot of people because the fear in people, they're so frightened to say anything against religion. We are yes. programmed, hardwired, do not say anything. That's the devil talking, you're going to go to hell. But we are rewriting yeah. the history. Um, that has been taken from us and the Vatican have many different ancient books that scholars wrote, disciples wrote, the Magdalene books, um, the Magdalene uh, writings are there. We know this, we know this for a fact, we know this. Um, also, yeah. <clears throat> you know, as we exonerate the memory of Mary Magdalene and we also uh, exonerate the memory of the Judas because we were told that Judas uh, kissed Jesus Christ in order to betray him but what didn't come out was that Judas and Jesus were incredibly close and they were looking for Jesus to kill oh. to stop his message and so Judas had to agree with Jesus that he would be the one and the disciples knew this and they asked him not to do it but Jesus wow. said there is going to be a civil war there will be a war in my name. There'll be many people slain because they tried to stop the message of unconditional love coming out and self-authority coming out. And so Judas kissed the Christ and it broke his heart and he took his own life. So these are two people that really need a different kinder look on the planet. <laughs> And there are yeah. many, many people that know about Judas and know that he was loving and that he didn't betray Christ. It broke his heart. But Jesus saved many, well, many more people. Wow, I didn't know that. That's the first I heard of that. Wow, that's very interesting. And yeah. you, know, you know, there'll be people like saying, who is that woman? We don't even know her. It doesn't matter who I am. It doesn't matter who I am. Just a voice in the field. That if we yeah. just think about these things, because there are others that know this to be true. And they have we yes. have, and they have marketed Christianity to be a certain way. So if we're gonna mm. allow any kind of thinking around that, we need all the facts. We yeah. need the truth. We do. And I think their new thing now is you know how young people today, a lot of them, bless them, are going down a wrong road in their lives, like say getting addicted on drugs and things like that. And now the new norm is, oh, well, it's because they're gone away from the church. Uh, they don't go to the church anymore. Well, I'm sorry. The people that used to go to the church years ago in my time when there was no drugs, I think done a lot more damage to innocent children and to a lot of people. I mean, look at all them young boys that was raped in uh, letter frack, uh, dangan. Uh, Artane, all them horrible, horrible places. I mean, I talk to men all the time that has suffered horrendous uh, treatment in these places. They're, they've taken to the drink. 
Um, they've t- a lot of them have died. A lot of them committed suicide. So, uh, but this is their new thing now. I'm listening to people speaking, and they're saying, "Oh, well, you think it's because they're gone away from the religion? They're gone away from their church." This is the new excuse now, for because we're in different times and drugs is a big thing among young people, and uh, which I don't wish on any young person. No, no, um, not at all. A lot of the, yeah. you know, the generations have been manipulated and raised in an element of hopelessness. Hopelessness. Yes. They're raised in yeah. systems that are, that are designed to break their spirits, to break their souls, to get them addicted to everything, food, alcohol, yes. sex, gaming, video games, yeah. you name it. It is a design yes. that sadly has worked perfectly up until this time of awakening. And now we're yes. coming to understand the great manipulation. And you got yes. the idiots like that. Who's that buffoon? Klaus Schwab from the World yes. Economic Forum. Oi, boy, I'm going to tell you again. You will be happy and you will know nothing. Can you imagine some buffoon getting on, creating their own forum and daring, yeah. to, say, daring to say to humanity, you will know nothing and you will be happy. Who the yes. I would say that was okay. I didn't sit down and interview that man or the other. Yeah. Yeah. What did you? No, no. Right. So because we didn't, we the people didn't accept, sit them down, listen to them, have them all interviewed, who's going to put yourself in charge of my planet, your planet, Maureen, our planet, these buffoons have gone ahead and done this and done that. And now we have to yeah. listen to them because they're the richest men on the planet. Yeah, horrible. It's just horrible. As far as I'm um, concerned, Maureen, they're all complete failures and it's very easy to look at one thing. If there is one homeless person, one hungry person, one cold person on our planet, then the people that put themselves in charge have failed. They're all okay, failed. It's really simple. Totally agree. Yes. You, you could have half a bean for a brain and work that one out. It's not difficult. Yeah. You don't need a yeah. degree, right? Or even a... Yes, I totally left. agree. Fantastic. Right. That is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So, my darling, I know we've gone around and around. There's just so much to your beautiful, sad, tragic, heartbreaking story. But this is a history book, Maureen. Sullivan, Thank girl you. in the town. Thank you. I would love to come to you for final words. Speak your heart, Maureen. Say whatever it is that you need to say. Uh, oh. I will suffer for this book. I know I will suffer for bringing it out. Um, I don't mind. Uh, I suffered enough in my childhood and I'm, go- I'm, go- I'm very proud of this book and the lady that wrote it um, Louise McNamara beautiful woman uh, she'd done a great job on it a uh, very honest woman a woman that uh, looked into everything that I said that everything that was proven I mean this book has taken a good few years to come out and uh, I thank her so much for writing uh, my story so well. She's done everything just beautiful. And I can, I think the most important thing about the book is when I heard the lies that was told about me again, you see the family have to cover up now and they have that I pull nun, a veil off a, a nun's head and everything. That just made me sick. I wanted to get physically sick when I heard that it could make up such lies. Um, that's what made, made me, de- I decided, I said, I'm going to do my book. I'm going to leave my truth behind me because I'm 71, coming up 71, I'll be 71 in August. And I don't know how long more that I've got left on this planet, but I've made my mind up. I'm going to leave my story behind. And I hope that no child will ever, ever have to suffer the pain that I suffered. And then when I do tell my pain and to show these people up for the evil that they did, I suffer more. So now I know and I've come to live with it. I will carry this with me till the day I die. And that's why I need to leave 
my story behind. If I can save one child, I, I'm happy. I hope it's going to be a lot more. But if I can save one, it it I, I will be happy with that. Beautifully said, Maureen Sullivan, beautifully said. Thank you so much. And your book, yeah. Girl in the Tunnel, is out now. And yes. it's found in <clears throat> all the good bookstores and online. Yes, and Amazon, and it's on the mall, and it, and it's doing very well at the moment. And I'm, and I mean, I haven't even had the launch yet, but it, it's doing very well here in my hometown. <laughs> You'd expect it to. I, t I think people would just buy it out of nosiness anyway. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, some of them are going to be so nosy. But I'm getting a great feedback on it. I've had more survivors come to me. And that I didn't even know was survivors here. That shocked me a bit. When women would ring up or get through to me on Messenger on Facebook and say, oh, could we meet you for a coffee? Uh, you might recognize me. Uh, you, you won't tell anybody who I am. And I go, no, no. I said, I won't if you need to talk. And I've met up with a woman that lives a little bit outside of town. And her son is from her father. bless her bless her to trust me with telling me something like that what a beautiful beautiful woman and I just she wanted to, you know she was trying to keep, keep strong but she was breaking down so I got her out into my car quickly and we headed out of town I said let's go off out the country for a spin I said because I don't want people seeing you crying it's going to draw attention to you and which she shouldn't have to but I, I don't want her suffering. I don't want people pointing the finger at her. And she's kept her secret for all these years. So I don't want to break it on her now or anything had to happen to her. There's other women coming out. Uh, a woman that was abused by her brother. Uh, a woman actually was abused by her mother. Uh, gave her awful abuse, even sexual abuse. Uh, that kind of shocked me. I was taken back. Um, so if I'm helping these people and they can talk to me and we can comfort each other, sure then why would we care about the few that's going to be, that's going to ostracize us and, you know, treat us badly? I think we'll be able to get over that. If we can do good, if good comes out of it, it's going to be worth it. The only thing that can come from this is good. Yeah, it has to be good. Yeah. You, you as a light, you as a beacon, you writing this book and sharing your story is going to be so incredibly healing for other women and men who are now adults who've gone through this. It shines yes. the light on all the darkness that always was. It was always there. We've grown up thinking things are normal. We don't even know what normal is. We've all been repressed and told to think this, be, think this, be, do that. We're yes. in, a, in a concentration camp, which is what those laundries were. Uh, yeah, back. exactly. Yes. And you mentioned yes. all the little boys, all the different children's homes, all the little boys that were slain and molested and yes. raped and murdered by men of the cloth. So yes. at this stage of humanity in 2023, April 2023, if adults still cannot think for themselves, they might need to recognize their own brainwashing, their own fear and phobia of going against a system True. that has abused yeah. their own ancestors, their own grandparents and parents and brothers and sisters and cousins and mothers and friends and teachers. It has happened. It has been rampant. It's still happening. Yes. And your generation is the one that breaks all of the binds that do. Yeah. And we yeah. can no longer be afraid. I say to people, when you come forward, you better have proof. You better have your yeah. story the names, the proof, because when we do speak ill of others, there's a recourse for that. So yeah. those of us that come forward and we tell the truth, then yeah. love, love protects us. Others come out. Others, you can feel the resonance of the heart. You can see yeah. the eyes. You can tell in the voice, the tone, when someone's speaking truth. And you are speaking such truth. Oh, yes. Yeah, my story is complete. There's not one thing in it is it's not true. 
It is the whole truth that happened. I have all the papers to where I was. Um, and other children were abused. Uh, I, I couldn't believe one day a woman said to me, oh, we know what you went through. And I said, oh, thank you so much. Because it was nice to get a bit of kindness. And I said, well, thank you so much. Yeah, my daughter uh, was abused by him, you know. And I'm looking, I go, yeah. I said, oh, would you like to come forward? And she said, no, I'm not having my daughter being slain. She said, like you are. They're slaying your character. They're trying to destroy you. And I said, yeah, but I said, there's nothing I can do about it. I said, if I accept that pain, I said, I won't talk at all. Yeah. I won't tell nothing. So, but she, anyway, she's, she's, decided she's not coming forward and that's it and there's nothing I can do about that I wish her well I hope that her daughter will be okay in life and there's not a thing I can do about it no. but I would like to say one thing to people as far as I can get the message out please if there's a little child and you think there's something wrong being done or the child is in pain in any way don't be afraid. Please don't be afraid of these people that will slay you and put you down for it. Just take the child, get that little child a little bit of help. If it's something else, well, so be it. Why are we afraid to ask questions? Why are we afraid to bring a little child forward? and say things are happening to this child, we're suspicious, we think this, if we're wrong, we're fine, we're wrong. It should be okay. At least we try to do the good thing. Don't have children being slung into care because they're being abused, sexually abused, and nobody is asking the questions. These penetrators are evil people, as you say yourself, and rightly so. Pedophiles are being left out into the world to damage other little children. I think it's so important that we have to wake up to this. We have to be able to speak about it without being slain, without being our characters and everything being destroyed. We, we can't, we just cannot be afraid of this anymore. We have to take a bigger look at it. For our children, for little children, little innocent children, we, we've got to find it in our hearts to take the slain and, and just bring it forward and talk about it and point out these people um, if we know of them, because they're very clever, they hide very well, mm -hmm. they can hide it very well inside them. Where do you hide this, this evil? It's covered up so well. Please help these little children and look after them and don't put them into Magdalene laundries or make punish them punish the person that should be punished yeah that's such a strong message yeah. and you know the thing is people will watch and listen to your story of all ages and and they will they will think well i can't imagine that of course you can't imagine that because you would no. never harm a child like people are out there watching this now i speak directly to you uh with love like most people could never even conceive of the idea of harming a child and so we are then innocently assuming that other people would never do that but they yes. did yes. and they have yes. and they, they do did. and the worst of the worst of the worst sociopaths and psychopaths and serial killers are in our hospitals our medical fields our religious fields our education fields they're on your school boards they're school governors they're at the the highest echelons of the echelons and we have to be okay with looking into that and recognizing there are monsters that walk amongst us that are after the children, yes. the young people, the men and yes. the vulnerable, the sweet, the loving. And until we come together in love and we say no more, shine the light yes. where the dark corners are. You know, we are yes. the change is here. The change is here. The change is here. And we must know that. Yeah. Maureen Sullivan, yeah. I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours. I I just send you so much love from my heart to yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you're you so, so much. You're so brave, darling. You really are. You really thank are. Thank you.
and, and even if we have, let's say, other little girls who are now grown up women and other little boys who are now grown up men who watch you, at least maybe they can grieve and move and shift some of their pain and blame and shame that was never theirs. Yeah, hearing, I hope so, yes. Right, through hearing yeah. your words that, that allow something to release in them. And that for me yeah. is my, my wish for all of you out there. Okay. And that again, we shine the light on the Magdalene's name and we raise that in light. And we shine the light on the Judas name, we raise that in light. We shift and change the installed programs on the planet and we come just from love, just from love. Thank, Thank you, you, Maureen Sullivan. Hold your book up Thank one you. more time. Bless you. Bless, Bless you, darling. Hold your book up one more time for us. Girl in the Tunnel. Girl in the Tunnel. Maureen Sullivan. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, darling. You're very kind. Thanks a million. All right. And to you guys watching, we send you love. We know this has been very difficult to watch and very thought provoking and very painful because it goes against all of the installed programs. But surely anything that is claimed to be love and loving is that. We see who people are by their actions. So from your time as a child to now, look at that reach a hand back. Don't judge Maureen Sullivan. Don't harm her. Don't shame her. Who are you to do that? You weren't the little girl that she was. Maybe you were. But those of you that weren't, you have no idea how much this lady has suffered in her whole life, how much she was a deleted blank, how much she was raised to think she was nothing and she was discarded and she was hidden in a tunnel. You be kind to Maureen Sullivan. You show your loving actions. You be kind.